I believe you're um, <laughs> I believe you're going overseas into this year. Where are you headed yeah, to? Well, I was talking to Michael Richard actually. He was um, he was in, I had a mic, parents' place in um, in Sydney when I was over there. Oh yeah. Right. Said, what are you up to? And I said, oh, I'm not sure. I showed him a folio. He said, oh, if I'd like to work, I want to bring some stuff over. And oh, brilliant. Not frame, but yeah. just take it over. Oh, yeah. Said, That's yeah, good. Not a problem. And he, um, so then this year, um, he said, oh, I'm going to go to the asylum. He said, I'm going to go to the asylum. He said, I'm going to go to the asylum. He said, I'm going to go to the asylum. He said, I'm going to go to the asylum. In um, April, then should be cool. Oh, yeah, great. Relaxing. Yeah, great. Okay. Very interesting choice of music there. Is that what uh, Radio West is playing lately, or is that, is no, that your own? It's Triple J. Right, okay, that's the new one, right. Does that make your, your mind work better, that sort of thing, or is that... It does, actually, yeah. yeah. So it's your I choice find. of music. Uh, sometimes I like classical music, sometimes I like a bit of Metallica, and yeah. it just depends on the movie. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah, it depends what you're painting, I suppose. But, uh, yeah. yeah. Sometimes you just get a feel for the Yeah. Um, just looking around, some of the paintings you've got here, um, you've uh, sort of very interested in the female form. Um, is there any particular reason for that, or? Yeah. Or you're just, just not a sick boy after all, yeah. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, last sort of while, I've, I've been doing lots of realistic landscapes and, you know, bread and butter prints and stuff, and paint. Yeah. But lately I've started looking at people and the context, the social context between uh-huh. um, the suppressed female and the, the egotistical male. All right, yeah. So I've just been exploring different yeah. media and Yeah. Um, last year you went to Albert's nightclub yeah. and uh, did a painting of Rebecca Taggart. Yeah. Um, was that a purely professional basis or oh, yeah. did you actually enjoy that? <laughs> <laughs> actually I, I really enjoyed it. I think Rebecca did too because she had... Oh yeah, she, yeah. She, um, she was sort of quite relaxed about what she was doing. She was relaxed about her body, she was relaxed about who she yeah, was first. for sure. And she's not perturbed by people looking at her in a you know, nude format. She's not really worried about that. So, and I approached it initially purely from a professional down to a sort of yeah. um, white rush. She's a model of painting. That's it. That's all. Yeah. Then I got to know her as a person. Yeah, it's just, it's yeah. because you know, she's connected with oh, yeah. she's an amazing person. I mean, you have to be pretty, pretty loose to sort of get up in front of a crowd yeah. in a nightclub and you know, yeah. um, be painting and stuff. But yeah, um, when you do take that example there, that you see next to, you, um, do you actually have a, a female uh, model in mind? Or yeah, is this is a, a, a girl up in her called Linda. Right. The spring line up there. That's you know, just into modelling and taking yeah, it easy, and she just said, oh, look, I'll pose for it. And I said, she said, what sort of pose do you want? And I said, well, I don't really mind. It's up to you as to how you feel about yourself. It's mm-hmm. just more of a formal pose or a classical pose or whatever. Yeah. And I said, well, I'll just leave it up to you. Yeah. And she just moved into the sort of position I painted her. And I just worked in different you know, abstract landscapes. All right, and yeah. Throwing the context out. Yeah. So there's some work into that, and that's only just the beginning of it. Right. So you, um, do you do sketches beforehand, or yeah, then yeah, move into the painting? Or? Right. Okay. Multi talented. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, oh, what about, yeah. What about the one above that? Uh, what inspired that painting? Um. Actually, this was quite a quite a mind blowing one because the whole the whole concept of coming to uni is about particularly on this campus in Bunbury is about um, connecting with what you believe about itself in some regard so eventually you come back to yourself all the time and in the uni you see so many people wandering around with their own little you know facades yeah. little cat you know their own, their own little yeah, from, and yeah. for a different context they change it and yeah. completely different yeah. so this exhibit here we call Head Start right, that's okay. in July and Norman Moore the education minister are alive in that one oh great yeah. a bit of political shit here and that. yeah for sure that's great but, yeah it's good it'll be fun um, I know in the past you did a lot of um, printmaking, mono prints and uh, tile prints, that sort of thing. Yeah. Are you concentrating more on the paintings nowadays or? No, <coughs> well, I sort of I like 
to paint a lot, but I also like to explore. I use printmaking as a drawing format rather than drawing. I'm mm-hmm. painting that I sketch in plates and print them, and I find that I think it's looser. You can just do so much more. Yeah, such sure. a diverse medium that you can work into it. You can leave it as an essential one of it, just as it is. Right, yeah. And um, you did a lot of work with using gold leaf and that sort of thing. Is that because you want more for your paintings? or? No. Um, <laughs> Well, actually, it's funny you say that because a lot of people um, attribute gold leaf to it as a decorative source, and I use gold leaf as a light source. Right. I don't, I'm not particularly interested in work. Right, I'm yeah, actual, fair enough. I'm more interested in the intrinsic sort of um, value you, you get from the actual medium, mm-hmm. not how much, you know. Well, I mean, you do, you, you're sitting there, with <laughs> two bucks at a time, yeah. tiny bit of Yeah, you don't want to cut wrong, yeah. And you, by the end of it, you've used 80 bucks up, and, you know, you're sitting there with your fork in your hand, and you think, yeah. hang on a minute, I haven't eaten today, and, um, but I've got a thing out of gold leaf there. Yeah. I've used 80 bucks to gold leaf, I could have gone out for dinner, yeah. I could have gone out for my friends. Yeah. Oh, I'm fine. I'll just keep it. Yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, it does definitely improve. I mean, the way you use it and everything. Um, I've noticed a lot of um, the stuff. I'm not sure there's anything here, but um, I saw stuff stuff last year using bits of watch band, uh, watch insides of watches and springs and things like that. That looked really good. Yeah, freezing time, using mixed medium. Right. A lot of people are um, so concerned about having this pristine, nice landscape or a pristine shot of a house or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But I prefer to keep the realistic content and also don't people think. Yeah, yeah, for sure. What the heck is he going that? Why is he doing this? Yeah, yeah. And after a while you get to realise that you can use those particular icons mm-hmm. as a puppeteer and these different masks and he's going through life and using different phases in his life. Yeah. And um, after a while you can use these... Well, they're realistic images, but they're used in context. Yeah. Well, that one sort of catches. Yeah. Well, that one sort of catches your eye because you've got the the nice uh, background background sort of the sky. Oh, well, this is why I interpret it anyway. Yeah. And you know the nice sort of pleasant colours and the actual um, figures in there are the, the blacks and greys and you know it's yeah it really strikes you. Um, the um, mannequins there. I'm not sure we've got them in shot or not, but I'll just pan across a bit. Do you want to, okay, we'll pull it in. This one here. Yeah, where'd you get the mannequins from? Actually, I was down at Bon Marche, uh, which is just an old country store down there. Yeah, yeah. And they had, um... You look like you're very intimate with them, actually. <laughs> <laughs> they had a... Do you name your models? <laughs> yeah, Warrior. Warrior. Um, <laughs> um, they had these, these things down there for sale. I bought the oh, right. mannequins for a hundred bucks. Great, yeah. Stop. Stop. Yeah. Got mannequins, but... The thing that I liked about it was that they typify a particular era in the way that people um, express the human form. Yeah. And um, some of them have got, like in the 70s, all the mannequins suddenly became unhaunted. You know, they didn't have, didn't have brass. It was yeah. You could get rid of that sort of thing. Yeah. Things have been free and relaxed yeah. and whatever. And then in the 20s, they had, you know, they had hands that were so spindly and thin that they almost... They have enough room. Yeah. So unrealistic. Yeah. And I've changed the context by adding different forms of meaning. That's painting, painting, so mm-hmm. print making, um, drawings. You just cut them up and then get them. Yeah. <laughs> actually, I've been actually going to hear this with yeah. um, the adhesive and then paint into it. Oh, right, okay. Um, a lot of females, or a lot of people have been criticising females lately as um, sort of segmenting themselves and saying, well, you know, I don't like my, my hips or thighs or I, don't, I think I've got fat legs or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, you deliberately segmenting us your... Um, yeah, I have actually, in some ways, I've, I've, a lot of people have come in here, there's probably been about 60 or 80 people who have come through here in the last two weeks that have been really quite... Not disturbed, but it makes them think as to yeah. why they, they think, why are you focused on this sort of thing at the moment? And a lot of it is about that that mm. new identity, that yeah. form of, hey, you know, we're people, mm. we're not just some sort of, you know, shot mannequin. Yeah, that's for sure. Starts. We don't have the next that thing, yeah. but the neck that thing would probably snap on. That's right, yeah, and that's all. If I had yeah. kids and I had a, and I had a woman that side, I wouldn't have swimmed out, hadn't I? Yeah. That's right. Barbie dolls. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's interesting how, like you said, that um, how mannequins have changed. Oh, um, changed you know, they sort of the twiggy look, and then yeah. you know, uh, the lobster sort of El McPherson look, and you know, uh, Kate Moss, and that sort of thing. You know, sort of things change over over the uh, decades. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's interesting that things like that. Um, yeah. 
so um, what sort of hours when you when you're working here? Do you work? Is, uh, like, I work up here during nine to five. That's just the normal format for you. No. Right. So one in and out. I'll take over these. I haven't really kept any specific times when I'm here. But at, usually, when I'm particularly for these sort of large prints, I've um, been unlocking away from the realistic image. So I've had to work in, from the subconscious mind all the time. All right. Yeah. And sometimes I get up at four thirty in the morning. Yeah. Get on the press and do some work. Go to bed. And think, oh, right, that's great. Right. Yeah. It's really bizarre work, but maybe something yeah. new and unusual. So I don't really keep 24 hours as a format for an artist. Yeah. Well, um, I noticed when we were outside, uh, you picked up that um, the cement bar with the, the span in the middle, and you sort of said that'd look really good if you painted and stuck a header on that sort of thing. Are you constantly, constantly thinking up ideas and things like that, or do you have dry periods? And um, sometimes I think the dry periods come usually when I've. It doesn't happen all that often, but sometimes you need time to think and just react and go out and have good time, mm-hmm. go out with your mates and do things that aren't continually, you know, orientated around painting or thinking or, you know, sculpting or whatever. Yeah. And after a while, you just don't get out of that room. Yeah. You just continue thinking about things and yeah. somebody will say something to you and think, oh, yeah, change the context, put it somewhere else. That's bizarre. Mm. Yeah. Move this and move that and look at this person over here and how they're reacting to that person there and yeah. just creates another idea and hey, it's back into it. Yeah, fair enough. Um, so I know with a lot of photographers, they're always constantly, they're not looking through their own eyes, they tend to look through the lens all the time. Yeah. They sort of, um, you know, they look up, look up in the clouds and the sky and instead of saying, you know, that's a really beautiful sky, they'll say, oh, look, that'd look great in a photo or, you know, you see someone and they say, well, you know, they're really photogenic. Are you sort of the same with that with your artwork? In a way, you know, in a way, artists are voyeurs. Right. They, um, they're continually looking mm. at things and recording them visually. Right. But when you think about it, a lot of, a lot of the time, if you think about when, you, when you're back to a kid, you don't remember the, the things in words sometimes. You yeah. don't remember what people say, but you always record in some way an image mm-hmm. of whatever it is you do. And yeah. a photographer takes the image and, yeah. and captures it. And bang, way more. And you can't, you know, a photo doesn't lie. That's how it is. Yeah, yeah. That's how right. yeah. it might deteriorate, right, deteriorate over age, but. You know, most of the time artists are always there. They yeah. get into seeing things, they see things differently sometimes. Sometimes they see it much like any other person would. Mm-hmm. But a lot of the time they're looking for hidden nuances. Yeah. Yep. So with you concentrating the female form nowadays, um, so you're at a nightclub or something, you don't see girls and say, look, she's got a really nice figure, I'd really like to paint her. Or? No, you don't. I don't think in that context. Well, no. I do think sometimes you think, right, she's a stunning person, but why is she stunning? Yeah. And a lot of times beyond that sort of facade, a lot of times the person itself, the mm. personality or whatever. Yeah. But I appreciate yeah. female male forms, you know, organic forms, vegetation, yeah. whatever it happens to be. Yeah. So that you take that as a challenge, as a artist to say well, she's a beautiful person yeah. can I capture that on can- on canvas yeah that's is that right. the sort of challenge yeah yeah it's an, an interactive process mm, yeah after sure. a while you get to know the person you get to know what's happening and yeah and after a while then Brings, you know, bring a canvas like that to life. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, the painting behind you there, um, I noticed a couple of um, the sort of religious uh, symbols. Yeah. Um, what inspired that sort of thing? Um, it's an iconic work, actually. It's, it's like the orchestra, it's like a stage of life. You get the mm-hmm. orchestra at the bottom. Mm-hmm. And then orchestrate things and make it hand up and all the rest of it. Yeah. Music's a, a good part of it. That, and that's part of my life all the time. I've always got the music going somewhere. Right, yeah. And uh, these are icons of different people you find in life. You've got the, you've got the, uh, the Herculean, um, you know, Mr. Charles Atlas, bodybuilding sort of, you know, right. And you've got this sort of crucifix figure that's, yeah, it's religious to kind of touch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And then you've got the subjugated female that's been married to some um, bureaucrat that she hates and has an affair with some other guy over here. Right. Maybe she has an affair with that woman. Yeah, okay. He's got the romantic with his flower in his hand. And um, this person just enjoying life as it is. Right, okay. Two people are copywriting on the ground. Uh huh. And the artist. Interesting icon. Yeah. The artist having his pedestal at the top, looking at it all. Alright, okay, great. And um, invariably the artist falls off his pedestal and comes back down right on Okay, so is that like sort of a godlike figure? Um, well, in some ways, it's, in some ways, it's a feminine symbol actually to be connected with a nebulous. In some ways, it's to be connected with um, looking beyond, beyond the literal, mm-hmm. looking more 
um, capturing something that's going to be able to nurture. So in order to, when you're taking, you're not just taking it for yourself, you're taking to gain, hand back in and out, off me and onto that and forever. Yeah. This one here is just a, um, the usual sort of iconic way to find the southwest. Mm-hmm. Vases, flowers and tables with the classical figure, a bit of a scene in the back, archways, doorways, windows, looking in and out, bit of, bit of symbolism, bit of, you know. Bits and pieces here and there. Uh-huh. And, um, um, do you always, uh, oh, the, the chalk work, uh, do you prefer that or colour? This actually, oh, this is, this is a monoprint. Right, okay. Another one, so that's a print. Mm-hmm. But I'll use chalk work into it. Paint. Mm-hmm. Stuff like that. Yeah, okay. And, um, yeah, oh, I don't know, I prefer colour. I like working colour. The black, sometimes the black and white is, you know, just the essential print. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's quite good because it's not, you know, it's not really, it doesn't really need colour a lot of the time. Uh, it's not okay. as good as it is, that's how it's written. Yeah. Uh, is this latest work or is this uh, older this stuff? Are, yeah, this one's about, yeah, okay. this one's about, um, I don't know, about the boat of life, I suppose. Right, okay. Sometimes a bit rocky. Mm-hmm. Fall off the edge and... Alright. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, a few mermaids and... The symbolism coming in there again. Yeah, these okay. fish are started developing these fish. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you find that your moods aff- affect your um, work? Oh, yeah, definitely. Do you, yeah. So, if you're in a good mood, you sort of print happy colours? or? Yeah, um, actually, after a couple of thoughts, it's probably pretty good. Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So, that's where, the, that's where the more blurred images come into it, doesn't it? Um, yeah, sometimes the blurred images become. You know, they predominate. And mm-hmm. A lot of the time, yeah, a couple of ports, go to the pub, uh, okay. go out and about, have some fun, come back, think, right, oh, seriously, I've got to put something down here, mm-hmm. and record what I've been doing, who I interact with, yeah. the fun and games. Yeah. Does it look different the next morning? Yeah, always. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, no, it's hard looking through the. Is it? Yeah, really hard. <laughs> Yeah, hey, it really just does. Just put it on. You don't even have to. Just put it on your shoulder. You don't even have to look through it. It doesn't matter. As long as you're pointing in the right direction. Okay, fine. No just the catch you look at it, glance and just take it off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah this is a um, a market or a, or a study. Mm-hmm. Lots of fibers formed yeah. out of clay, but technically, as Jeff was saying, it's just too. It's impossible to get clay to to form yeah. that sort of shape and hold, it, right. hold itself or sort of fall over right, and okay. add things to it. Yeah, then. yeah, it's pretty tough to get a mannequin in that kind of position too. Yeah, I often find that these sort of things tend to keep me going too. What would that be? Coffees. Oh, okay. And Cigarettes, well. yeah, yeah, that sort of thing. Break. Yeah, okay. Yeah, bit, of a, bit of a plug there by, for yeah, your sponsor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sponsored by Straight Break, all right. <laughs> This is a friend of mine, Di. Oh, hi, Di. Wave to the camera. <laughs> okay. You're not going to do any modelling for... Okay. These are, um... These are some more mono prints that I've been doing. Mm-hmm. These are about... Actually, about people at the union. All Big the, pan shot. Yeah, little, little bits and pieces they get into. Uh-huh. Why the castle? Hey? Why the castle? Is that not a phallic symbol at all? <laughs> oh, of course not. I mean, this, okay. this, isn't, this isn't the body. I noticed. Yeah, I noticed the... Uh, not at all. <laughs> um, okay. Actually, I've got a... And the jester image? Tattoo that runs up my arm, which uh-huh. is similar to that. Uh-huh. And um, actually looking back into into the past and bits and pieces and talking mm-hmm. to the family, I found that my father was a gardener for a, um, a castle in Scotland. Right. And he was there for, I don't know, five or six years, and he moved on. And in Spain, where I'm going, there'll be um, these bits and pieces, there was Mm-hmm. Oh, right. So, yeah, eventually I'll live there sometime. Oh, right. Yeah, the top floor or the bottom? Uh, <laughs> sometimes I might shoot out the top. Yeah. <laughs> Depends how lucky you get, but anyway. Playing the part. This, this is a uh, G rated video, by the way, and <laughs> just, just in case. Okay. But I mean, right. it's, got, it's got symbols like there's the court jester. Yeah, I spotted that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, as a, it looks like a certain looks like a certain lecturer we know. Yeah, uh, I reckon he came from Waikato or something. No, okay. Yeah, no, no names, no names mentioned. No, it's a good colleague. Yeah. Colleague, yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah, yeah. 
Just in case we send him a copy of this. That's right. Just in case okay. He gets a copy. Just panning down to that one by your feet there. Yeah. Very um, interesting. Is that? Hey, presto! Out of the subconscious comes something completely nothing absurd. Oh. These are one of the yeah. ones that I. I'd rather have that coming out of the subconscious than anything else. Yeah. Well. But I mean, hey. So um, you you dream in black and white, do you? Or? Uh, sometimes. Yeah. Actually, that's one. That's a good point, though, because I can't ever recall dreaming in colour. I don't think I've ever. You know, do you ever think of dream in colour? Um. Yeah, I have. You have. Um, I can't remember. What's that? In colour. Dreamt in colour, or was it just a symbol in your head that told you it was a colour? I don't know. I thought I was seeing colour. Yeah. Well, that's that's the whole point. I mean, a lot of time. Those absurd images you would think, shit, it's good to make a one. I wonder what it would be like in colour. I wonder what it would be like to add, you know, some of this time and some sort of you know, coloration to it so it blows it blows it away. It's make it completely different, brings it forward. Uh, so it's a, just it's, um it's, 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 it's Yeah, just to change the subject slightly, um your paintings are selling reasonably well. Yeah, they so have okay. been, yeah, so um what's the what's the kind of price you get nowadays? Well anything between well, so you, you pay a third, you give a third to the gallery, and mm-hmm. they, they're looking after you. Yeah, they take their commission. Money off them, and not doing much work, so put them lying up. Uh-huh. No, they're pretty good. So they take a third commission. Third goes on framing, which mm-hmm. is an extortion of cost. Oh, yeah, I've heard that. Yeah. 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 And I'll work at about $2.70 an hour. Jeez, you know? so money isn't your main motivation no, in life. No, <laughs> well, it's, a, it's an important part right. that comes with being by backing yourself up to some sort of academic pursuit, not right, an okay. intellectual or textual educator. Yeah, okay. So that's going to provide the ready butter yeah. and all those sort of things, the investments in the art. Eventually yeah. when I die, I'll yeah. make everyone else rich and I'll be happy. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on to the colour ones there. Seems we are um, actually videotaping in colour, let's just not trip over anything here, Jason. Yeah, it's, it is colour, isn't it? Oh, uh, yeah, it, it is colour. Just you find it's not in colour. Yeah, this was a, a mono print, just a print mm-hmm. on here of a landscape out again. sideways. Mm-hmm. And um, there's a there's a, uh, a form. Am I going to trip over anything here? Or? No, 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 don't trip over me. No, that's fine. Um, You're expendable, you're in the artist. That's right. Yeah, we are expendable actually. Very expendable. Very expendable. Yeah. yeah. Very expensive. A bit of a novelty too. really for campuses. Yeah. Yeah. Well, even for two seventy eight an hour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta work for three hours just to afford a pack of cigarettes, mate. <laughs> economic, economic rationalism gets Yes. And um, yeah, this is just bits and pieces of other prints that I've put in there and I've changed the context from the. Oh, so all the off cuts? Yeah, well, yeah, in some ways. <laughs> so you. Sometimes um, it's a good print and I've cut it up. Great, right, this, this, this could be a green video as well, I mean, recycling and everything. It could be, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah the only thing is that the um, paper that it's printed on is heavily bleached, so the bleach goes oh, to the down it. Then we put it in framing yeah. that's um, primed rainforest wood. Oh. So there's people that do these prints and works. Yeah, they're not happy. The ecology, yeah. they reckon they do. Yeah, Fair enough. And they so. cover it in gold loaf. Oh, this is right, yeah. <laughs> All these poor guys digging up gold just for you to whack on your paintings. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, um, yeah, much like um, an aerial landscape. It's not, you know, it doesn't have to be a flat. Yeah, I just got that feeling. It's sort of an aerial um, shot of something or other. These could be piers on yeah. top of a building. Some of absolutely no some. town planning management whatsoever, right. but I mean, hey. But <laughs> <laughs> at least they got the squares right. Oh, this is right, yeah. Very well done. This one here is more... Uh-huh. I, um, oh, you just totally buggered on my focus. Thank you very much. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> this woman here is actually made up of figures. There oh, so she is laying down. Yeah, she's laying down and okay. she's made up of figures circling to, to um, form another figure. Mm. These are all parts of other prints. So that's plain perspective, plain media okay. and colour. And um, that's that's the um, woman resting after a really good night out. Yeah. Or at home. Or at home or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. This one's another. So um, with Valentine's Day coming up tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, you just sweet Valentine. Actually, I'm looking at paper for that. Why? Are you speaking some? No. I'll put some in. <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> I'm going to get some back. All oh, right, okay. Fair enough, yeah. No, it's about giving. Yeah, Valentine's sure. Day is, I mean, you know, the idea behind it's great. I think that... Uh, it's slightly over commercialised nowadays, but oh, yeah, yeah. the actual original idea behind it's great. And maybe yeah. that's that's part of it too. A lot yeah. about you know things that happen in society are about you know, giving something to somebody and, and making them feel good about themselves. Mm-hmm. And hopefully these works will do that. For some people, they'll think, oh, you know, I'm having a hard time. 
but I can appreciate this work because I've connected with somebody that's given me, yeah. you know, it's had a, an influence on whoever, yeah. and they're influencing me, and hey, we're all part of the society. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you get much commissioned work at all? Or? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I have had, yeah. um, not, not a great deal, I had not in the, not in the last little while, man, because I've been in Sydney, right, and okay. drinking and smoking. And yeah, too much, yeah, yeah. living in that. So yeah. I haven't had a time to... Well, every artist has got to have a yeah. habit, don't they? Yeah, they do. <laughs> <laughs> Just as long as it's not a nasal habit, you'd be right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or if I could afford it. It did wonders for what's his name with the curly hair? Um, Australia. Yeah, that's the yeah. one. Did wonders for him. Yeah, LSD, been, that kind of stuff. Been, he's been an influence too. A lot of his works have really? a great bearing on, on some of the things I do. All right, just not his habits. No, his oh, habits good. Not. Okay, no. fine. Well, we'll just pan across to this shot here. And there's and the um, out of it. Yeah, there's the, the train of life. Am I going to chip over everything, die? No. Uh, talk to me. Watch your, that yeah, what's that? Okay. That's fine, I can feel that. Trying to lie. That's not I can't pan thing. back anymore. Two centimeters away from the desk. Okay, that's fine. And these, uh, these, these figures here, this one's recoiling in fear at this sort of almost Pink Floyd sort of character. Uh huh. Um, headless but with receptacles. But oh, great, okay. Head. This one here is actually crashed into the back and it's broken off and fallen down. Right. So maybe he's the, he's the hanger on for these people here. Mm-hmm. This one's fearful but going through life okay. This one here is confident. Right. Um, do you actually do you actually think of these things as you're painting it? Like sometimes I do. Sometimes doing a story in. Yeah, sometimes the they, they are stories. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's just a subconscious thing. Like yeah. Freedom. Well, um. How do you feel if, say, the, the story you just told me then about it, yeah. how do you feel if someone else comes in and gets something totally different? That's fine. Whatever they get from it is what they get from it. And what, right. After they've interacted and talked about it, then I can see where they're coming from too. So mm-hmm. as soon as they give me their opinion or whatever, um, how they think the work is, they're actually telling me about themselves. Right, yeah. And if they're telling you things from the subconscious, you're actually right. delving deeper than the, hello, darling, how are you going? Yeah. And, you know, with your yeah. mind and whatever. Yeah. So you're actually finding out about them. Yeah. And how they're, you know, how they're feeling, whether yeah. they're pissed off, whether they're having an affair, or yeah. whether, you know. Yeah, so if someone walks. The road's been, you know. Yeah. If someone comes in and finds all these phallic symbols you never, never even knew existed in the painting. You sort of can oh, tell a few things yeah. about that. You can tell a few things about you that got, person. You got suppressed suppress that. I mean, so it's fine. You're a bit of a deity, but all right. Yeah. Fair enough. Oh, yeah. People find all sorts of strange things in work all mm. the time. Sometimes I look at a print and find something completely different after a while. Right. Oh, my arm's getting. Some. And um, again, made up of different figures circulating mm-hmm. form another form. And some of these works I've sold about four or five in a series to my last exhibition, which we're starting to work on that. Mm-hmm. And one was auctioned through the gallery. Um, the local one? Bunbury Art Gallery, yeah. Um, in a paperworks exhibit. With oh, really? It's quite a few people. Great. That was fun. Um, who was a particular model on that occasion? Because she seems to have rather large uh, memories. memories compared to everything else, yeah. Well... I don't know. Maybe it's just wishful thinking. Okay. <laughs> we are male after all. <laughs> well, yeah. I try to try to avoid that. You know, I think after a while you can, especially on this campus, or especially in an academic format, that sort of stereotypic, oppressive um, dialogue it really isn't necessary. I yeah. I mean, it's fun. It's good. You're out, you're out for mates and pissed and whatever. That's yeah, what yeah. But... A lot of yeah. the time, I'd rather give an appreciative comment than one that's sort of half broken. Yeah, fair enough. So sometimes it becomes like that. Yeah, I'll keep my cheap comments out of this then. No, no. It's <laughs> 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 Okay, Penny, what's the next one? And talking about suppression. Yeah. This is a, probably a work that's fairly, it's reasonably strong. It's like, it's got a large, large female figure that they're pressing down on the artist, trying to stop them doing what they're doing. Mm-hmm. And um, maybe that's reflective of what's happened in the past, the last couple of years. Alright. So, you so know, make a break away from that sort of thing and get on with it yourself. Alright. Rather than have to rely on other people for interaction, you know, you're just doing mm-hmm. it off your own back. Yeah, um, you started doing education here, you've completed a degree, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what made you decide to uh, become a primary school teacher rather than because concentrating? Children, children have children are where we start basically. Mm-hmm. A lot of my work sometimes the the actual format um, of interacting with reality 
Mm-hmm. That's where I start. The kids start with that. That's how they start. And then gradually as they get through school and they're suppressed to make some fit in the boxes and do things in a certain time, yeah. they just lose it. They don't get a chance to do any more than do a couple of drawings and after a while they get sick and tired of them and that's it because they can't do with what they want to do. They can't yeah, paint what yeah, they want to yeah. Oh well, yeah, well some teacher's idea of art is giving them a, a photocopied sheet and asking them to colour it in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. It's photocopied again. Oh that's right. Yeah. Let's yeah. do it again. So I think by doing an education degree it's open a scope. It's a bigger scope. It's an economic base and also it's um, about giving things to kids. Mm-hmm. And I'd like to be I'd like to be an educator of both that arts and kids. Alright, so I need experience. Um I was say, so are you in the future are you thinking about concentrating on your teaching or in your artwork or? Uh, yeah, both. And both. Yeah, concentrating on living here now right. rather than living in the past like a lot of people do. Yeah, sure. These really you know, set yeah. lives that are really traditional, they don't have much scope beyond what they're doing. Yeah. Where they pick fences and they've got their yeah. 5.738 children. Yeah. Yeah. Nice gardens at nice the front. front. They haven't gone out beyond that. Yeah. It's safe in this environment. Hey, we can't mm-hmm. do more. That's it. I'd rather yeah. be up there doing it. Yeah. Um, right. Panning down to the one down by your feet there. Mm. It's very dark and gloomy with a couple of symbols we all recognise as, <laughs> yeah, as coat hangers. Yeah, coat hangers and strings attached to masks. Mask mm-hmm. road wall. Have you been to a mask road wall? No, I haven't. I've heard it all about one, though. They have these really grotesque, smiling faces, you know, and you know, they're quite mm-hmm. jovial and whatever, and flowering and all that. And generally, the people behind it are really sad. You know, they're, they're living living a lifestyle yeah. and sort of... Um, Do you want to read this chair, though? Right? Oh, yeah. Betray us with how they actually feel. Mm-hmm. So it's reasonably dark, and that was probably a mistake on, on a technical format, which is pretty much. Yeah. But... In the same token, I can isolate these images and paint in these spaces to mm-hmm. bring that that, that um, image back out, that person, mm-hmm. whatever it is, mask. Yeah. Back just so maybe, maybe it's about people that live in little closets too. There might mm-hmm. be a closet gay and, you know, they occasionally come out. That's about it. And other people that, you know, like cross-dressing and all that sort of stuff. So it could be yeah. about people that... You know, are absurd and inverted commas, but they're not really. I mean, they, yeah. they're just normal people, they're part of society, but hey, you don't know anything about them until they actually tell you. Yeah, for sure. And people start commenting about the work and what they find in it, and next second, hey, you found out that they're gay, um, they're cool, they're good people, there's nothing to worry about, why you're threatened. So it makes you think about yourself, basically. Yeah. You know, you don't have to worry about, yeah. you know, all um, sort of... Hangs around. Some of your um, paintings, you've said sort of titles for them. Mm. Do you always title all of your or name all of your pictures? Or? Yeah, this, this one here, I'll probably call um, Worshipper. Which one are you pointing to? This that one, one. okay. Because it's got a nebulous the sun, that's uh-huh. a very feminine, feminine symbol. Alright. And this person that's on the top, you know, celebrating life and a recurring image through the podium that they're standing on. Mm-hmm. So some, I'd probably call that Worship. Alright, okay. Here, I'd probably call. Great train, you know, yeah. Something about the academic profile and you know, little faces of keepers who go through uni. Eventually, we get to the other end, but the whole time we're sort of teetering, you know, we're balancing whether we're going to pass or not, whether we're going to get past the ACP. Yeah, well, what about the symbol of the um, the feet and the. Uh... This, this figure here. Yeah. Um, well, that's a fanny, actually. Alright, okay, and sort of a phallic symbol, yeah. Yeah, well, it is in some way. And this. Long cord could be a cord of life, could be a right. long cord, could be you know something that's giving, that's, something that's feeding into something else. Right. That might not necessarily be a tongue at all. Uh-huh. And, um, and the uh, images of the the little uh, the masks and heads down in the bottom there, no, the, the ones in the circle the in the here, yeah, mainly about balance and rotating how, how we circle through life. Sometimes right. we just feel like we're upside down, teetering, and uh-huh. you know, that's what. Yeah. And then you know sometimes we balance up and we feel like okay. Mm-hmm. Why the fish? Fish probably because of a Piscean uh-huh. and um, that fertility. And fish fertility. Yeah, fertile fish. Okay. Small, millions of them. Alright. Just for a lot more. Alright. So. Oh, no, it's just a recurring. It could be. Right. It could be. I was just thinking rabbits would be more on that line. Rabbits <laughs> 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 sort of, Yeah, I suppose not, not quite as romantic. But, oh, yeah, um, maybe. Well, that's a, this is a fairly romantic sort of image. Yeah. Know, yeah. It's got these old fashioned sort of old carts. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, how you decide uh, what are you going to whether you're going to do it in black and white or colour or that sort of thing? It's just what you've got on hand at the time. Or? you get um, the inks that you use dictate what colours you're going to be using initially. Yeah. I like to rather than just leave it like that. That would probably look great. Match it up and frame it in a nice frame. Yeah. It probably look great as it is. But after a lot of these background areas here, yeah. which I've etched away I've probably had colours mm-hmm. and bring them out and bring them right, so more light would you describe yourself as an artist who likes colour or yeah I work in colour all the time right. continually dream okay. of black and white work in colour yeah, yeah. yeah. and this one here I mean that's another one that's another idea like the light sources from here so predominantly those three heads the first thing that hit you as soon as you look at it yeah then you work out this fish rotating over these carts mm-hmm. you work out this little fish here swimming through the ocean and these uh-huh. are actually supporting this rocky path. And the uh, Christian symbols? Yeah, Celtic cross. All right. Um, yeah, just the, um, the straightforward Christian cross. Cross, yeah. And I've had a fairly oppressive um, religious background. Right, it's okay. Been, uh, you know, oppressive in that sort of regard at that uh-huh. stage. But now they're loosened up and... I don't even have a church, I don't even have a church anymore. Right, fair enough. But I'm not particularly religious, I'd, I'd prefer to accept people and accept things for they are, rather than accept one point of view, that narrow. Yeah, you know, for sure. You just can't do that, sort of thing. Yeah. And I think the, I think the Christian faith over there. Yeah. There's something wicked. Catholics. I suppose Buddhism would do. Mm hmm. Anyway. Right, just hanging around. Can you pick up one? Here's called, in case of emergency, break glass. Mm-hmm. You, you're in an emergency, you, um, you lose your head. So if you've got a little plaque with a little thing on the wall, you break it open and take the head off and put it on and get on with it. <laughs> oh, this is fun. fun These are just little realistic sort of landscapes. Oh, no, no. You know, they like to see things that are reasonably realistic. They can see what it is, but it doesn't have to make them think. From the wall, looks like a window. I don't have to look at it, it's decorative. It looks nice, but what does it mean? Mm. It doesn't matter as long as it looks nice. But I'd rather do some work that's got sort of, you know, a story, an idea behind it, rather than just. Something you like, just like to look at it. Yeah. <laughs> do you like to just look at it? Okay. Yeah, sometimes you don't want to think beyond what it is. No. Mm. Oh, I, yeah, sometimes I just like pristine mail up though. A windy harbour, or without having to worry about thinking beyond it. But after a while, you get to realise that if you know, survive as an artist and make money out of it, and, so, and actually make an impression on people, your work has to be strong, continuous, and mm-hmm. you can't just stop. That's a nice. Yeah, talk me through nice this. <laughs> talk me through this one, Alex. Um, well, this one here is um, sort of an idea that's spawned out of. This is actually an upside down field. Right. Um, off Very uh, intricate welding you've got there, actually. Yeah, it's um, incredibly pissed um, late at night welding. <laughs> electric arc, uh, not electric arc, um, what do you call it? Arc welding. No, the other one. Oh, no, I can't acetylene. No, nah, oxy no, no, no. And um, this, these had little, this, had, this tower had little people in it sitting out, so it's like a, a big phallus tower. Mm-hmm. These people living in it, and they're on different poses, relaxing, right? so, you know, dancing around or whatever. Great. And I've just worked into the aluminium with different types of oil. Can I walk backwards here? Yeah. Yeah. And, um... I'll just get a long shot that's on, so I can't pan out far enough. <coughs> Pardon me. You just have to call for anything. Yeah, I'll get used to that. So it's on a base. This was in the Southwest Survey. There's an oil hole in the water. I'm going to give it back because I can't. I need to get, get more figures put onto it because we put it in the car and hey, press stay driving home one night. Smash and break all the little figures in it. So I'm going to build some more put them into it. That'll go into their house. Mm-hmm. It's on that middle of their landscape table. Mm. Yeah, uh, this shot isn't going to work out. No, oh, this uh, light, the light's coming in from the door. Yeah. Is that? Is that? I've been using one of these mannequins that I've been building. Mm-hmm. And, um, glue. I don't see that. No. Um, gold leaf and suspension. They're trying to dollars with it. Okay. And, um... Yeah, bits of hands and things to give you ideas. These are like the knickknacks of life. Right. 
Okay, yeah, how do you drink out of those cups? Uh, <laughs> they're rather holy. Yeah, I just think yeah, so. It gets all stored in the handle. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, artists, yeah, so. just artists use some wacky things, I don't know. Oh, dear. And then just store paintbrushes and stuff. Mm hmm. Great. You know, I'll write um, ideas down, sketch an idea, and then I'll just go back to a painting and work on that, and I might be looking at that one and think, ah, I've discovered something that one now, I can't work on this idea. Yeah. And that's how it's been, basically, the whole time I've been here. I've been getting an idea here, going home, having a good time, coming back, you know, and more ideas put into it. Mm-hmm. So what sort of artist are you inspired by? Do you actually look at art, other artists' work yeah. and say, I like that, I'd like to do something like that? Matisse. Okay, hang on. Whiteley, Lloyd Reese, um, Van Gogh. Van Gogh, yeah. Van Gogh. Um, so we've got flies, hundreds of them. There's just, I've got countless Picasso. A lot of Picasso stuff's quite strong. Mm-hmm. And... Um, I also like looking at kids' work too. Yeah. Kids have got unlimited talent. And some kids are just incredible. You just, you just think, what the hell are you? Mm. That? Yeah. That's absurd. And then you'll look at another person, a contemporary or a classic person, and they just, they come with ideas too, and you think, yeah, that's good too. Yeah. Um. So what advice would you give if, say, if you're in a maybe year six, seven class or something, and you saw you saw one of the kids there with exceptional talent? Mm-hmm. Um, what sort of things would you tell them to um, maybe inspire them to keep going? Or yeah, I'd I use probably intrinsic positive. Yeah. Um, yeah. Encouragement. Yeah. Not reward. Encouragement. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. And I'd probably give them more opportunity. I'd allow them more scope. Allow them to go further and further out. Mm-hmm. Not just you know, sit there and look at their thumbs and play yeah. the painting and get bored. I'd rather say, okay, you've got talent, or you know, you're, I would say you've got talent, and say, right, okay, you're interested in what you're doing, this is great, I'm interested in what you're doing, play yeah. this more. Yeah. And so it gives some time, here's more materials, yeah. here's the opportunity, we encourage yeah. you to do it. So, um, so, what would you say to people that say to you that, um, Art is something that you're born with. It's not something you can learn. If you can either do it or you can't. Yeah, I'd, I'd say I agree with that in some ways. But, yeah. Um, some children do have an affinity for picking ideas up and using them, mm-hmm. and it's given the opportunity I'll do it. But yeah. I'd, and the same, the same goes for adults as well. Mm. A lot of yeah. adults have got a lot of talent, but through their life have either not had the opportunity to do it. Yeah. And I've had a lot of opportunity to do it. I've, had, I've always done art, always done it, and always through, through high school, always been encouraged, encouraged by my parents to do it. Yeah, fair so enough. So it hasn't been a real, sometimes a hard slot, mm-hmm. to survive, but with the encouragement. And actually, there's a lady here today that was very, um, she just hadn't been encouraged a lot of times in her own way. She's yeah. she sort of a square little bucket. Yeah. That was all she could do. Yeah. Hey, just go for it. Do something completely different. Do this yeah. iconic work. You're Hungarian and Dutch. Yeah. Get into your grassroots. Do something about it. Yeah. Um, so what? Um, an artist like Ken Doan, um, he's been criticised in the past as being sort of a money grabbing, money grab, money grabbing sort of an artist. Um, what do you think about that sort of work? My sister worked with Ken Doan for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, and found the duplicity of his work intimidating. Uh, if you, I mean, you'd like to own, I mean, if, you, if you buy a work, you'd like to know that it's not one of 15 million. You'd like to know yeah. it's one of itself. Yeah, fair enough. Printmaking essentially is about reproducing an image over and over and over and over, and I can do that. Yeah. Woodblocks and all that, but I prefer to keep the, lim- the, the edition on the right down, one of 10 or one of 20. Yeah, yeah. And let the other people know who have got that particular work, so they can, if they want to, have a look at the other work and say, right, it's completely different in itself. It's got a different line. Yeah. But Ken Doan, I think, um, has captured the uh, graphic art market, which mm-hmm. is fine. I think he's manipulated the tourism boom yeah. pretty well, and I think he should be admired for yeah. some of the... Um, so is that due more to his marketing skills than his artistic? Yeah, I admire his management, art management, his marketing skills, and also his... Um, Intensity, mm-hmm. always working, always, yeah. always yeah. coming up with a new idea, always every year something completely different. It comes up with, but you can, and you can recognise his style. Yeah, it's not everything. Yeah, the details, all those details, the canvases. Yeah.